Psalm 95, verses 6 and 7. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We've assembled this morning to offer praise and adoration and thanksgiving and honor and, and praise to our Father and Creator, to His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth who gives life and, and leads us in lives of holiness. And I know that we get into patterns and, and routines, uh, rituals, even positive rituals, one of which is being together in this room at 10 o'clock on, on Sunday mornings. And it's easy to just let things slide into automatic, to just think we know what the drill is and let our minds be a whole lot of different places. And yet worship calls our hearts and our minds and our thoughts and our intent and our emotion and our devotion toward the throne of God, to offer him what is due him to offer him that of which he is alone worthy. In the words that are, that are translated for us, worship, in, in our New Testaments, speak to what worship is all about, what is being asked of us. Uh, Latruo means to, to give obeisance, to, to kiss the hand, to prostrate oneself, to bow oneself down before another in homage. Latruo is another word that's used, and it's used of service, but in particular priestly service, sacrificial service toward another. And then sebamai just means to give honor, to worship. In this modern English word that, that we use so often, worship, which can mean so many different things to us at so many different times, comes from an old English word, the spelling has changed over the years, but it's the old English word that really gives us insight into what worship is all about. The original word was worthship, and it's about acknowledging worthiness in another person, ascribing worthiness to another, and that's exactly the portrait of worship that we have described for us in Revelation. And before the first reading this morning from from Revelation 4, let me just remind you about the circumstances in which this was written. The Apostle John, the beloved Apostle of Jesus, uh, the one whom he loved so dearly, is now an old man. He's been exiled by the government officials to a remote island, the island of Patmos, because of the testimony of Jesus and the Word of God. He's in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And he's startled by a loud, booming voice that blasts like a trumpet. And he turns toward the voice to see the source of the voice. And he sees the glorified Son of Man. He knows the Son of Man. He knows the, the risen Jesus and the ascended Jesus. He has seen his face shine like the sun before on the Mount of Transfiguration. But he hasn't seen him in a while. And his hair is, is white like wool, like snow. And his eyes are, are glowing uh, like flames of fire. He's wearing a long robe and it's got a golden sash across it. His feet are glowing like burnished bronze. His voice was loud and roaring like the sound of, of rushing waters. And as mentioned before, his, his face was shining like the sun in its strength. And when he sees this, he worships. When John sees this, he falls down at the feet of the glorified Son of Man as, as if he's dead, as if he's been struck lifeless. And Jesus reaches down and touches him with his right hand, and he said, Don't fear. I'm the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death in Hades. And I want you to write what you see. And blessed will be the one who reads these things, and blessed will be the ones who hear these things, and even more blessed will be the ones who do the things that are written in this book. So John begins with letters to churches, real churches in real places, but messages that are still relevant for us. 
And then beginning in chapter 4, after those letters in chapters 2 and 3, the throne room of, room of heaven is opened up for us. And John will describe there and in chapter 5 and chapter 7, chapter 19 and other places, what is going on there among the angelic beings and among the saints who have already departed. So we begin this morning with a reading from Revelation 4, beginning in verse 1. John writes, After this I looked, and behold, a door was standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass, like crystal. And around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and night and day they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Please be standing as we sing. John continues in Revelation 5, 1, Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open it, open the scroll, and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look in it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll... The four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed uh, people for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped.
from Revelation 7, beginning in verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. They shall hunger no more neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Please be standing for the next two songs. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are just and true. For he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah! The smoke of her goes up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. And I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory, for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God, then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Worship is intentional. Worship is purposeful. Worship is focused on the worthiness of the triune God to receive our adoration and praise. And that calls for our hearts and our minds and our thoughts and our words to be directed in communication to him. Expressing through the words that we sing, the prayers that we offer, the communion in which we share. Communicating to God how much we love him and how much we adore him and how much we are grateful to him for the salvation that he has given us in his son, Jesus Christ. In the readings, we saw this massive, innumerable throng around the throne of God who are dressed in white. And only theologically does it ever make sense that something can be washed in blood and made white. The things that are washed in the blood of Jesus become pure and clean and whole and spotless. And we have that blessing to have shared in that sacrifice, to have had our, our souls washed clean in the blood of, of Jesus Christ. And for our worshipful 
for our, our worship to be meaningful to us and for our worship to be acceptable to God, he asked that our lives conform to the faith that we profess. Jesus in his ministry would quote from Isaiah to many of the people of his generation and say, this people draws near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. He desires the fruit of our lips, but he desires the nearness of our hearts and lives that are committed to him in devotion. Not just in times like this, but a life of commitment, a living sacrifice in which we surrender all to him and a life in which he is glorified in all ways and in all things. So as we stand and, and sing this song, if, if you need the cleansing and washing in, in that blood of Jesus to have your robes made white, that you now can be added to the, the number of God's people, but be added to that number of God's people who will be with him eternally. We would love to assist you with that this morning. If, if you have faith that Jesus is the Son of God, let us surround you as you confess him, uh, as you turn from sin, and as you're, you are united with him in baptism for the forgiveness of your sins and reception of the Holy Spirit into your life, into your soul, into your body. If there are other needs that you have as, as you contemplate a, a life that, that you want to glorify God, whatever that need may be or way in which we can assist you, we ask that you come and make that known as we're standing and singing and the shepherds are here at the front to receive you.